Here, we're going to do unit conversions with multiple steps. So where we've got to take a bunch of conversion factors and put them together in a row, cancel a whole bunch of units to get to a final answer. Here we've got to find out how many seconds there are in four hours. Here's some pieces of information that tell us how the units relate to each other. You might notice right away that there's no one relationship that lets us go directly from seconds to hours. Instead, I have minutes and hours and seconds and minutes. So this means that we've got to attack this problem in multiple steps. Here's our plan of attack. We're starting with hours, okay? So we can go from hours, based on this information, to minutes, okay? And then after we have an answer that's in minutes, we can take that and then we can convert to seconds. Let's look at how we do this in what's going to be two different steps. I'm going to start here with four hours, okay? Four hours, and I'm going to multiply that by a conversion factor to get rid of hours. So hours is here. I'm going to want hours on the bottom, one hour, 60 minutes is going to be up here on the top. So now hours on the top, hours on the bottom, those cancel out. I do 4 times 60 divided by 1. And I'm going to get 240, the units here are minutes. Now my answer is in minutes, but I still got to go from minutes to seconds. So that's what I'm going to use a second conversion factor here. Multiply the answer 240 minutes by a second one of these. I'm going to put 1 minute on the bottom. I'm taking it from here. And to get into seconds, I'm going to put 60 seconds up here on the top. So now minutes cancels, minutes cancels, and I'm finally left with seconds. The math that I'll do here is 240 times 60 divided by 1, and that's going to give me 14,400 seconds. And that's the final answer for this two-step problem. This is one way, the way I just did, this is one way to solve a two-step problem. But it's often easier to not worry about this intermediate answer, the answer that I get halfway through. And instead, I can take these two conversion factors and I can just string them together right next to each other and then do the whole problem from start to finish kind of in one fell swoop. Let me show you how I'd rewrite this to put it all together into one. I'd start with four hours, just like I did before. Then I'd bring down this conversion factor, 60 minutes divided by one hour. Just to keep track of what's going on here, the hours up here and the hours down there cancel out. So now I'm left with minutes. But instead of actually writing out this intermediate answer, I'll just stick this conversion factor in here because now my units that are left, they are minutes. So I can take this second conversion factor, which is going to get rid of minutes, and put it right next to this here. Okay, so now I have 60 seconds up here, and I have one minute down here. And so the one minute down here is going to cross out the minutes that are up here remaining on this old conversion factor. So this minute's on the top, this has minutes on the bottom, and now I'm left with seconds. This can be really nice because now I can do all the math kind of in one step. I can take this and plug it into my calculator as 4 times 60 divided by 1 times 60 divided by 1, and that's going to give me the answer that I got up here. Or if you have a scientific calculator with parentheses, you can do it as 4 times the first conversion factor, 60 divided by 1, times the second conversion factor, which is also 60 divided by 1, and you'll get 14,400 both times. So um, let's do a couple more examples so that you get more comfortable with this. Here we're asked how many miles is 152,000 inches. The two pieces of information that I have here don't allow me to go directly from inches to miles. Instead, I have inches and feet, and then feet and miles. So feet is kind of going to be my intermediate, right? Feet is what I can get to from inches, and then feet is where I can go, or feet will let me go then to miles. So the attack plan is going to be to start with inches, 
and then convert inches to feet, and then take feet and convert that to miles. So, starting this out with multiple conversion factors, I'll have 152,000 inches. I want to convert inches to feet, so I'll use a conversion factor based on this relationship. So, I want to get rid of inches, so I will put 12 inches from here on the bottom, which means that the other side of this uh, equivalence here is going to be one foot, and that's going to go on the top. When I do this, I like to cancel units along the way to make sure that I'm on the right track. So that got rid of inches, and now I'm left with feet. Okay. Now comes the second conversion factor. I'm going to multiply this by something that will get rid of feet. So I want feet here to be on the bottom, so I'm going to do 5,280 feet, and then the top will be the other half of this, where I have one mile. And now I have feet up here and feet down there, and I'm left with units of miles, which is good because that's what I'm solving for. So I know that I set this up correctly. That that's what can be so useful about this multiple conversion factor method, is if all your units cancel and you're left with the one unit that you need, you know you set it up right. So I always like doing this with a unit canceling because I, I know that I did it correctly. So now we come to the math. We'll do this in one step. This times this divided by this times this divided by this. I've written it out here. Or you can plug these in as conversion factors with parentheses if your calculator lets you do that. Whichever of these two methods you use to work through the math, you're going to end up with an answer of 2.4, and the final units here are miles. We're going to do one more example, and this is going to be a little bit trickier because it's going to be an example where we have to put three conversion factors together. What is 350 tablespoons in liters? And here are three pieces of information that we're going to need to go from tablespoons to liters. Let's look at how we're going to do it. So we're starting with tablespoons. So from tablespoons, we can go to cups. Okay, so tablespoons to cups. That'll be our first step. Now after we get cups, we can go from cups here to gallons. And after we're in gallons, we can then go uh, to liters. So these three units are part of what we call the English system. And then the final here takes us into the metric system. Let's set this up with a conversion factor. So we're starting with 350 uh, tablespoons. I'm going to multiply that by something that will get rid of tablespoons. So I'm going to use this here. So I've got 16 tablespoons on the bottom and one cup on the top. I'm off to the right track because tablespoons cancel and I'm left with cups. Now I want to start with cups and get rid of it. So I'll use another conversion factor that will put cups here on the bottom. It'll be based on this equation. I'll put cups on the bottom, 16 cups, and it'll put gallons on the top, one gallon. And now cups that's left over from this conversion factor cancels out. Cups in my new conversion factor cancels out. Now I'm left with gallons. So now I'll go from gallons to liters, and I'll need one more factor to do that. I can use this relationship here. I want one gallon to be on the bottom, and then I'm going to want 3.785 liters on the top. Gallons up here cancel out, gallons down there cancel out, and I'm left with liters. Liters is the unit that I'm looking for, so I know that I set everything up correctly because everything else canceled out. So this method gives you that peace of mind. Now for the math, here's how. Oh, look, I should have made this, uh, made this a number in, in black here. Anyway, I do this times this divided by this times this divided by this times this divided by this, and that's what I've written out there, or as I've said before, you can punch this in with the parentheses into a scientific calculator. However you do it, the answer that you're going to get is 5.2 liters. So that's how to solve conversion factor problems where you need to string together a bunch of different conversion factors. Just remember to set it up so that your units cancel out and you're left with the final unit that you want 
and you'll know you've done it correctly. It doesn't matter how many conversion factors you've got to put together. Just as long as you get rid of all the other units and keep the one that you're looking for, you know you're set.